We're going to design the bandpass filter with a strange shape on its side lobes in particular, and I'm calling this a bird wing shaped bandpass filter. So let's have a go at it here. I'm going to do the sketching in DB, so I'll set sketch a filter in this manner, and I'm going to type in some band edges. I'll get rid of the old default situation. I'm going to be operating in normalized frequency and try to be quite precise about this. I'm going to go from DC to Nyquist eventually in these in these pieces but I'm going to come from with a, with a minus 40 side lobe at the far edge and dip down even further when I come to the edge of my pass band. I'm going to go 0 0.19, 0 0.21, 0 0.21, again uh, minus 60 is my start and I'll come up to the pass band which of course is going to be 0 dB and 0 0.21 to 0.29 will be my pass band so that gets a flat 0 across there 0.29 to 0.31 I'll ramp down the band edge so that's going to be going 0 down to minus 60 I'm almost finished and then 0.31 all the way out to Nyquist will be my last segment of this thing and here's my sharp edge at minus 60 building back up to minus 40 well thank goodness let's see what this looks like and there it is. Okay, I don't want to have auto scale. I'm going to control this scaling. I'm going to go about minus 90 to plus, sorry, minus 90 to plus 5. And close that. Uh, click off of this so that the red target profile line is now showing us. Get rid of that design that's come up. And you can see why I'm calling it a bird wing situation. Having gone to all that trouble, just for safety's sake, I'll pump that target profile out into the workspace in case I should have to recall it on an emergency basis. I'm going to uh, look at that, uh, well, different types of filters. Look, what if I try to uh, Yule Walker IR filter against it? There's a 29th order uh, approximation. I suppose I could go to 59th. Sorry, I'm, I'm using the wrong one here. Let me do the 29th on Yule Walker. That's what I wanted to do and even a 59th there. And you can see that if I lift this out as a separate design, you can see that it's uh, got interesting pole zero pattern, but uh, as far as its gain, it's not really particularly turning up towards the outside. We need some sort of weighting situation. And that's probably best done by uh, stepping aside from IR right now. And going back, let's say to that frequency sampling filter. I'd like a few more coefficients, maybe 93 of them. Probably begin to look a bit better, but still no hugging of these strange uh, stop band tilts here. Of course, what I can do is bring to bear windowing and force this to happen. Uh, so I'll go up here and take a window, click on it, and uh, since everything's overlaying here pretty dramatically, it might be a good idea to see all filters under under tools here and be able to look at just the particular one I want to have, which is the user def one, and look at it in DB. And I can see this a bit more clearly because this is pre-windering, that's post-windering, but it's back behind there. Okay, still not too great yet. So I'm using Kaiser windowing as I see down here. Go to user def and try controlling this. Maybe bring this right alongside here and have a look at what happens when I try to window more vigorously by pushing down the side lobes. And the side lobes of the window that is. And you see, can see that the filter is now doing quite nice approximation from minus 40 dipping down almost to minus 60. Of course it's quite wide. And that's, of course, another consequence of windowing. It's not the only way we could proceed. 
we could uh, get rid of that, get out of user def, in fact get rid of frequency sampling, and go and get weighted least squares. That's sort of a cute one. I'll take the weighted least squares here, which is the do-it-yourself one. Number 16, switch this on. And now, what's happening? Well, first off, I've got far too few coefficients. I'd like to get up to 93, let's say. And you see that what's happening uh, is that I've now got a, uh, a lower side lobe situation, but of course it's still not tilting the right way. Now, I can make that tilting happen by weighting. I can weight this whole area here by doing a right click on this red line, which is no longer in this particular design mode representing the target profile, but rather the weighting. And as I pull this down, you'll notice that these side lobes go down a bit. And in fact, they are beginning to take this upward sort of shape. Probably better to see it here. You can see the kind of thing that's happening there. I've done nothing over to this side, so it's sort of flat. This is also shown here. This uh, red curve here is showing the weighting, which is the inverse of the altitude of this thing right here. This is my persuader. If I push it down, it persuades it more, and that means that the weight is heavier. I can make that shape of that weight be quite cute. I can make it sort of go up, well, click off of it. Come on, turn loose of it. Ah. Okay, I can draw this to more or less look at the shape that I want to have happening. And that commence, commences to follow nicely. And I can do the same thing over here. I can come down here and draw it down in like that. And here, then looking at the Z CL pig, I'm beginning to just get this kind of shape here. So I can control these side lobes pretty much at will by using my persuading factor here and if I should wish to really make the uh, uh, pass bend quite good in, in a certain region I could dip that down as well so that it would hug very closely. Hard to see that particular scale uh, here but there's the sort of design I'm getting so I can shape this design and follow these bird wings pretty well by these weighting factors which I see over here which are the inverse of what I've drawn here. So I can do quite a lot with this type of strange shaping of a filter and have quite a lot of fun.